And our exit poll that has now become the talk of the town set the cat among the political pigeons just hours before results make it all real. Our exit poll predicts a BJP South Quake viewer. It's one of the biggest takeaways from the India Today Access My India exit poll. In just the five southern states, the real surprises lie. Forecast number one, the BJP is set to extract revenge in Karnataka after its humiliating defeat in the assembly elections is likely to humble the Siddharamaya DK Shivakumar combo in Karnataka with a big, big sweep in Karnataka Lok Sabha. Forecast number two, the BJP's first footprint in God's own country, Kerala, a place where the Prime Minister has maintained a steady focus with his physical presence in the state multiple times this year. Is the BJP about to open its account in Kerala for the first time in the Lok Sabha? Forecast number three, the BJP's stunning Telangana rise at the expense of the BRS. Is that going to be a reality as well? Is the BJP all set to become one of the biggest players in Telangana? Certainly looks like it if the numbers in the exit poll hold true. The South numbers throwing up a shocking scenario as far as the India Alliance is concerned. Remember, uh, we have uh, Sagai Raj with us who, uh, who reports from Karnataka for us. Sagai, the narrative through this election season has been the South-North divide, that the South uh, you know, will never accept the BJP. The BJP cannot expect to grow in the South because that is the bastion of either the India Alliance or regional players. But the exit poll appears to have shocked many Sagai. It shows that the BJP is not only, uh, you know, sweeping Karnataka in large effect like last time, but is also, uh, 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 you know, expanding its footprint in places like Telangana, Tamil Nadu, possibly Kerala as well. Absolutely, and if you see since 2004, Karnataka has been a saffron state because uh, despite uh, when Congress was in power in 2004 and 2009, here in Karnataka, people always uh, voted for BJP and the numbers seem to be quite attractive for BJP from year 2004 till today. And uh, uh, as per our exit poll, this clearly shows that the guarantees which was been uh, uh, promised by Karnataka government, which has taken a, a, a national interest for the party, has not worked well for uh, uh, the Congress government here in the state because the candidates who have been fielded, whenever they campaigned, they campaigned on the guarantees and they were quite confident that the uh, women voters might favor them. But according to our survey, it clearly shows that uh, it has been a major setback for the Congress because uh, uh, the guarantees have not uh, worked as they have anticipated. Remember, the guarantees uh, which was been promised to the Karnataka, which was been fruit fruitful for the Congress, which is also extended to Telangana. And from Telangana, we have seen that was a major uh, uh, promise made in the manifesto of Congress, even in the general election. And so far, it has not worked well for Congress when it comes to exit poll. It clearly shows that people have not gone for guarantees, but for uh, BJP, especially Modi's guarantee. You know, the, the, the number of seats, Sagai, that have been, uh, you know, posted and forecast by the exit poll between 23 to 25. There are 28 seats in Karnataka between 23 to 25 for the uh, for the BJP. India Alliance just three to five. Uh, you know, this will be a commentary on Siddharamaya and DK Shivakumar, uh, you know, as politicians as well. It is true that Karnataka votes differently. Uh, you know, between the assembly and the and the and the uh, the Lok Sabha elections, but they will not be able to escape questions if this turns out to be true. And absolutely, remember both of uh, both of them are in loggerheads to be the CM of Karnataka. Sidramaya want to remain for five years. On the other side, Dikeshu Kumar is all set to take over after two and a half years, and yeah. both of them have to 
screw their hold on the state and the party and they have to ensure that they get, get good numbers and I had reported even in the year 2013 I have seen that at that point of time Sidharamaya said that they will get good numbers but on the election day Sidharamaya backed out and said that there was a strong anti-incumbency against UPA government and that is the reason they lost yeah. and this time we need to wait and watch what is the excuse that he is going to give because both the time it is he was a chief minister he, he, he held the party together and he is one of the responsible person to get the good numbers for the state of uh, for for Congress in the state of Karnataka and uh, Congress solely depending upon yes. South like states like Telangana, uh, Karnataka, Kerala and Tamil Nadu definitely uh, when it comes to Karnataka it is going to be a major setback if you see the say, exit poll for the Congress. Hey, thanks very much for joining us on that. Now remember that the BJP numbers in this exit poll suggest that the BJP has gone from being just a party that is most identified with the north and west of the country to now being identified with possibly a national footprint that very much includes the south. Remember, so far, the BJP has had no presence in Kerala, no presence in Andhra Pradesh. Karnataka has been a fortress that they've considered to be a gateway to the south. But in Telangana, with a huge spike in vote share being forecast by the exit poll and a prediction saying the lotus may be blooming for the first time in Kerala, the BJP has much to smile about. At 6 p.m. with Akshada, you'll see the other two states, Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh, which are also, uh, you know, holding good news for the BJP and NDA as far as the exit polls are concerned, which we must keep repeating because the results will only be known tomorrow. But even keeping with just the results that we have right now, let's just tell you about some of the other numbers as well. I apologize, viewer, that some of our uh, graphics, uh, we're not able to show you all of our graphics on time right now. Now we can. Thankfully, we can right now. There's our Karnataka numbers. Here's what the India Today exit poll projects for Karnataka. 28 seats in the Lok Sabha in Karnataka. The BJP forecast to get 20 to 22. That's huge. It had got 25 last time, only losing three seats despite a huge humiliating assembly defeat just one year ago. The Congress under Sidramaya and DK Shivakumar confined to just three to five seats is a stinging blow. And with the JDS, that number for the BJP obviously goes up to about 25 seats at a maximum, which would basically mean no change from the last time uh, for, for the NDA at large, but for the BJP just a couple of seats less. This is the best possible scenario for the BJP given the very aggressive campaign. Take a look at vote share as well uh, in Karnataka. Each of these figures, let me keep reminding our viewers, is exit poll data. The real results will only come out tomorrow. The question really is finally about what kind of alignment will there be between the exit poll and the results. 48% vote share for the BJP, 41% for the ruling Congress party in Karnataka, 7% of the JDS also adds to the NDA's total in Karnataka. Now let's listen into what the biggest Karnataka leaders have had to say on these exit poll projections. Not everyone is happy as you can imagine. Several private uh, survey reports and several channels. They have shown that in this exit uh, poll report, the NDA alliance under the leadership of Narendra Modi ji, under the leadership of BJP, they will get comfortable majority, including Rahul Gandhi, several uh, leaders from several parties, regional parties. They criticized about this exit poll uh, report. As far as concern about Karnataka, they wanted the leadership of Narendra Modi. The 24 election, it is pro-incumbency, it is pro-Modi. There will be no opposition and it will be completely favoring the good leadership of Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji. Probably that is a very good indication. The exit poll is what been already predicted. This is what the indication we have been getting all the while. Probably that is what will be seen in the tomorrow's counting, probably on the June 4th. <laughs> Sir, 
एग्जिट पोल में बहुत अच्छा नंबर बीजेपी इंडिया को दिया गया आपका रिएक्शन आज जनता मोदी जी के ऊपर भरोसा रखा है इसके लिए वोट दिया है उनका नीति नियत के वजह से वोट दिया है मोदी जी है तो मुमकिन है सच हो रहा है तीसरे बार प्रधानमंत्री बन रहा है Anaga Keshav is also live with us from Bengaluru tracking all the political developments after what can only be described as a numbers quake by this exit poll Anaga what's the mood in the Congress party DK Shivakumar expectedly says he rejects these exit poll figures you know that's what uh, uh, you know the the side that is forecast to lose always says whether it is the BJP or the Congress that is always the reaction but what's going on inside any internal meetings any nervousness because at the end of the day like I said to Sagai if these numbers hold true then it's a uh, it's a it's a commentary on both sidramaiya and dk shivakumar Well, you know, Shiv, talking about the mood in the Congress fold, even today, when you know, you know, when a lot of media persons requested the Congress leaders for bite, they simply refused, saying that we don't believe in exit polls, we don't want to talk about it, and you know, let's wait for June 4th and post that. We'll give our statement, is what they said, and that could actually speak volumes about what's really going inside them. Of course, the BJP, they, you know, look pretty upbeat. In fact, Kumar Swami, when we met him early this morning, he sounded pretty confident, even off the cameras, even off the record. He sounded. Pretty happy, very, very, very happy with the exit poll results. Clearly, it shows a sweep for yeah. JDS. They contested on three tickets, and our exit polls show that about two to three seats uh, will be taken over by JDS, implying that you know essentially uh, Kumar Swami and his nephew Prajwal will win, or if luck favors them, they might win Kolar as well. So that's the kind of confidence that Kumar Swami was also expressing. But understandably so, in the Congress fold, they are refusing to believe this. They are stating that our polls show us that minimum. Minimum to minimum, we are going to bag 15 to 17 seats. No question of us winning in single digits was the kind of statements that was given by Congress. They are saying that the people of Karnataka are very, very, very happy with the five guarantees that we have doled out. So there is no way on earth that after the assembly elections right. and what happened, the kind of rout that BJP faced, there is no chance that the people of Karnataka have changed their mind. So it's the Congress that's going to be winning big, is what the Congress is still believing in. But you know, Shiv, it's only tomorrow. Tomorrow on the June 4th, the yeah, big day, yeah. day that we've all been waiting for, will we know which way the wind is blowing in Karnataka? In just about 13 hours from now, our coverage will start at 6 a.m. tomorrow. And like Anaga said, uh, you know, uh, nobody is going to be talking about exit poll numbers. After that, it's going to be the real deal. But let me just remind all of our viewers that the Congress Party uh, was happy to, uh, you know, attend uh, debates and. Welcome uh, uh, exit poll numbers when it came to Karnataka last year in 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 May and then uh, in December in Telangana, uh, which they have every right to do. But then it is of course a hypocrisy to not want to participate in polls or at least appear to uh, not question polls when they are not in your favour. And let's remember that's not something that's confined to the Congress Party. All parties, including the BJP, are. Uh, you know, have two sides uh, to every story as far as exit polls are concerned. Now let's move on from Karnataka to Telangana, where the story is even more meaningful and exciting from the BJP's perspective. It's bad news as far as the BRS, which ruled uh, Telangana until just a few months ago, but it's very, very good news for the BJP and somewhat decent news for the Congress Party. The BJP, according to the India Today Access My India exit poll forecasts, 11 to 12 seats for the BJP in the Telangana Lok Sabha. That's up seven for the Congress. It's between four and six seats. That's up just a couple of seats. The BRS is the big loser. Dropping at least nine seats, most of that going to the favor of the BJP. So the BJP gaining big time from the bruised and battered, uh, uh, you know, BRS uh, in Telangana, and that really seems to be the reality. Check out the vote share, which tells an even more uh, dramatic story in Telangana. If these vote share numbers actually turn out to be correct when the results come out, it will show a truly dramatic. Uh, you know, almost unimaginable rise of vote share for the BJP, up 24 to 43 percent, which is the biggest rise of any of the parties, making it uh, pretty much the big story that will come out of Telangana if these numbers actually hold true. Apurva, the the bruised and battered BRS appears to be 
the biggest meal that the BJP is feasting on in Telangana. Uh, by uh, this particular uh, result, the Lok Sabha result, uh, even, even Revan Reddy, who you know, won the state handsomely for the Congress just a few months ago, had, uh, you know, had admitted or agreed that this Lok Sabha election would be in some ways a referendum on his leadership. What does these, these numbers suggest that it hasn't quite worked out? Well, Shiv, uh, you know, it's quite, uh, you know, it's quite revealing the numbers uh, on ground are saying what the situation is because BRS, remember, just a couple of months back, we had uh, had the assembly elections here in Telangana and we saw a massive loss there for the BRS. Nearly, you know, 75 plus seats the Congress had uh, taken yeah. easily and had won with a thumping majority there, a win that not the, you know, the BRS or the BJP had expected. In fact, the BRS was quite confident then and now now, Lok Sabha elections as well, we're seeing the similar kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, a win that the Congress and the BJP is getting. Like you rightly mentioned, what the BRS has lost, the BJP has gained in terms of numbers. That's the only way that we can put it. Tall leaders there from the BRS, uh, ever since the party had lost out on a victory there in Assembly polls, we see how they jumped to either the Congress or the BJP as the next choice for them to contest Trump. And that's what we're seeing there from the results on ground as well. In fact, I traveled extensively across Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. And one of the important things that we're seeing is most of the tall leaders from the BRS, they had jumped ship to the BJP as yes. they saw the chances there and they took it at the right moment. This time, the BJP there, they're eagerly awaiting the double digit there to make their mark here in uh, Telangana. It's going to be something. Last time, they had got four seats there uh, for the MP seats. And this time, they're well uh, and comfortably expecting 10 plus seats. That's what I I might add, and that's what okay. our exit poll results have also uh, brought down. But the real picture comes down to June 4th, that is tomorrow, when the right. results will come out. Will the BJP manage to get their 10 plus seats as they're hoping out of the 17? That's something that we'll have to wait for. It's incredible because if these numbers hold good, and remember it's a big if, uh, like Apurva rightly says, everything hinges not on the exit polls but on the actual results tomorrow. But if they hold good and if everything aligns, it basically means the BJP gets a second second big gateway in the south after Karnataka. So far, Karnataka has been its only sort of bastion, the only place where it has tasted power in the south. All the other states have been, uh, you know, sort of a mixed bag as far as uh, the BJP is concerned. But if these numbers hold good, the BJP gets another big gateway to the south. Andhra Pradesh is the third. You'll hear about, about that in detail with Akshita at 6 p.m. Don't forget to tune in for that. But here on Five Live, let me move on to the next, the third state where the BJP has something to smile about. This is Kerala, God's own country, perhaps the most forbidding state as far as the BJP is concerned. Not, not perhaps, really the most forbidding state as far as the BJP is concerned. Zero seats the BJP has had so far in Kerala, but the India Today Access My India exit poll predicts two to three seats for the BJP. The UDF, the Congress-led UDF, uh, uh, you know, once again, very, very high, 17 to 18 seats. That's, uh, uh, you know, similar, exactly the same as what it had last time. The left being practically wiped out in Kerala as far as the Lok Sabha is concerned, but the NDA, the BJP plus, getting two to three seats. Is that a reflection of reality because the seats being talked about here are Tiruvananthapuram, Trishur and Atingal. So you've got high profile people like Suresh Gopi, uh, Shashi Dharur and uh, Rajiv Chandrasekhar in the fray in those seats. Look at the vote share in Kerala. Also tells a very, very interesting story for the NDA, 27% for the UDF. It's down to 41%. The NDA sees a big spike. The LDF sees a big descent to 29%. The NDA really affirming itself, at least as far as the exit poll uh, uh, data is concerned. So this is, uh, this is something that Amit Shah specifically, the BJP at large, will be very gratified about if it works out to actually be true. Let's just play some reactions coming in on this time. Uh, recently, the media came under this way, the exit poll ka. So those are all false, uh, this thing. Why? Because all the contested candidates from Congress party, we have done our own survey. And in fact, we have cross-checked with the cadre and also 
हम लोग भी माइन्यूटली चेक किया है ऐसा नहीं है कि हम लोग वेकली ऐसा इलेक्शन लड़ा नहीं है लेकिन जिस तरीके के साथ में जो पूरा मीडिया के अंदर एक बहाल मचा दिया था दिस वेरी अनफॉर्चुनेट so we seeing it with skepticism and disbelief because we have also been campaigning throughout the country we also have a sense of what the pulse of the people is and we don't believe it is reflected accurately in these polls you know that uh, our congress president yesterday after meeting with all the india alliance members has said that he is convinced we are getting about 295 for the alliance i stick to that number i mean the fact is that the exit polls are based apparently on some sort of sampling which i don't believe is terribly scientific that you get eppadengilum ingane oru kanakku ithara ee rithile recurrent kanakku parayanum adu yadharthamaya sambhava nammal eppadengilum kandittundo ee maadhyamangalude oru drishti anadina porathu njangal adina porathu vara kandittundo let's begin uh, india today's shibi mall uh, who's been tracking Uh, the Kerala uh, Lok Sabha election throughout this uh, political season, uh, Shibhi. We spoke yesterday about this as well. Uh, you know, you were skeptical about the forecast that the exit poll has given for the BJP uh, in Kerala. But what's the mood on the ground? Uh, you know, exit polls have the have the power to you know enthuse and increase morale. Counting day is going to be a very busy day for everyone. Is the BJP on the ground? Uh, you know, looking at this credulously, or do they believe we've you know gone overboard in our predictions on them uh well uh, shiv uh, at at least a half an hour ago i got a call from a bjp worker again <laughs> asking me 27 person are you sure so uh, you know the 27 person vote share they're not very much surprised with the seats because they yeah. are in the internal survey also they said that two to three seats yes that's something that we are also expecting but the vote share which is like 27 person that's like a 12 person jump from last time which is huge as far as kerala is concerned so they're a bit skeptical bit refusing to believe the vote share that's 27 person and left is uh, 29 person that's like 2% difference for a party like community cpim which is probably the most strongest party in kerala so mm. that's come as a bit of a surprising factor for them but otherwise they're really happy and really energized considering that trishur and tiruvanantapuram is there in the list that's been predicted uh, you know consistently by most of the exit polls Uh, you know apart from us also so that's something that's giving them a lot of confidence uh, the congress is pretty much happy because in Ke- as far as kerala is concerned because 16 to 17 18 is something that they were expecting mm. there's no particular wave that they had this time uh, you know unlike the 2019 uh, 17 18 they are pretty good to go in as far as kerala is concerned they've already released a victory song uh, in kerala two days ago right after the exit polls were announced also so they are pretty chill but it's the left camp that seems really concerned and disappointed because be. uh, you know the only factor that it was working against them was the anti incumbency factor against the state government they knew that right from the beginning but if it if it it had impacted much more than what they anticipated then it's really going to be concerning for them they managed to win just one seat last time there was a rahul gandhi factor shabrimala factor in 2019 this time all of that was not there it was just the anti incumbency factor plus uh, you know generally what gives edge in con- edge yes. for congress in kerala is that congress has more chances than the left former government at the center but this time that was not there plus both of them are part yes. of the same alliance so whoever wins ultimately goes to the india alliance so that perception was also there Correct. despite that if the anti incumbency factor has played out so well on ground then it's really concerning for cpm in especially for chief minister pinrai vijayan because he has been the face of the party Absolutely. he has been leading the campaigns very confident about the left performing well on ground so that's really concerning for them also one more point i feel if uh, the nda's vote share is going to increase as one more factor mm. that i personally feel it was kerala went into polling booths in the second phase yes. when there was not really the opposition in the picture or you know there was any kind of discussion regarding i think it all started after the second phase True. was over third yeah. fourth phase so the polling percentage also came down uh also i personally feel apart from the heat and summer everything i personally felt there was a lack of enthusiasm among the anti bjp supporters in kerala uh, you know as the narrative that bjp created was nda is anyways coming back to power so the people did ask us that what is the whole point of electing right. somebody to sit in the opposition when we can have somebody sitting as part of the government that 
uh, campaign in Tiruvannathapur and Trishur was also the same. Okay. Elect somebody who will be a union minister as part of the ruling government. So okay. I think that also, if the vote share goes really high, that also is a very, very, very interesting analysis, Shibi. Thanks very much. And I, and, I, and I suspect that you're going to get many more phone calls from people in Kerala going into the results band. So good luck with that. Get good rest. Tomorrow is going to be a big day for all parties concerned. And we will, of course, come back to you. Now, remember, as far as the South is concerned, there's a piece of dialogue that comes in one of the biggest movies of our time, Pushpa, which is Flower Nahi Fire Hai Ye. This was something that has been used by politicians to describe, uh, you know, what the BJP can do in Telangana. And senior journalist T.S. Sudhir has, in fact, used that phrase in an article which has turned out to be one of the most read articles on the India Today website in the last couple of days. T.S. Sudhir is with me live, one of the most respected analysts and political reporters focused on the southern states. Sudhir, welcome. Good to see you. Your viral article is up saying the exit poll numbers suggest BJP in South flower nahi fire hai. Tell us why you think so. Well, if you look at the strategy which has been adopted by the BJP in the five different South Indian states, it obviously wants to shed the tag of being seen as a Hindi, Hindu, Hindutva party. In Karnataka, it's the principal political party. In Telangana, it is involved in a tripolar contest. In Andhra Pradesh, it's a junior partner to the Telugu Desam. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, it's definitely punching above its political weight, while in Kerala, it's trying to get some kind of a foothold. Uh, and that's why I believe if these exit poll figures are to be believed, and if they indeed come true on Tuesday, the 4th of June, it would really mean that the BJP is not a flower, the BJP lotus symbol, flower nai, fire hai. Mm. And it would really prove that as far as Narendra Modi is concerned, who made umpteen number of visits to Tamil Nadu, to Telangana, yeah, Karnataka, yeah. and Kerala, besides Andhra Pradesh, that Modi wants to show that Modi jhukega nahi. You know, a fire to already tha in Karnataka to take, uh, you know, take off from the metaphor you've used, Sudhir. What's your reading of the Karnataka exit poll projections? Looks like, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the BJP plus JDS is managing to, you know, hold the fort. Well, Karnataka, I think, is a difficult state to predict because this is one state where the Congress believed that it had run a very good campaign. Many of the sons, daughters, spouses of the sitting ministers were made the candidates in order to ensure that the ministers would campaign extensively for their near and dear ones, ensuring their success. So in that sense, in Karnataka, they played what they called a play-safe strategy. And they would believe that these exit poll numbers would not come true on mm. Tuesday and the Congress in Karnataka would do very well. In fact, I asked a senior Congress leader, why is it so that the BJP, which was punished for its performance a year ago in the Assembly elections, why would the people of Karnataka punish them a second time? They do believe that the BJP still has not recovered from that kind of a shock. The performance of many of its MPs, and in fact, the BJP changed many of its MPs, including in Mysuru. That was enough indication that the performance of their MPs in Karnataka was not above mark. And, you know, uh, uh, coming to Telangana, where you live, uh, Sudhir, what do you make of the annihilation of the BRS? I remember your ana analysis just six months ago during the um, assembly election as well. Uh, the exit polls suggest that the BJP appears to have fully gained from the sort of decimation and the breaking of part of the BRS? Well, uh, pretty much on expected lines. Uh, in fact, many people did believe that the BJP would gain from the annihilation, the decimation of the BRS uh, in Telangana. Uh, the BRS had won up to 37 to 38% vote share in the assembly elections, and this was expected to come down. Most people expected that it would be around 20 to 22 percent, but yeah. what Access My India poll says that it would be as slow as 13 percent. If that indeed happens, it would definitely transfer much to the BJP kitty because the BJP and the BRS vote, uh, the voter in a sense overlaps. He's essentially anti Congress uh, in nature and he would not, the vote would not transfer to the Congress, but much more to the BJP. So it is essentially because of the decimation of the BRS that the BJP seems to be gaining in Telangana. And that's definitely very bad news for the regional party. And finally, uh, Sudhir, before I let you go, if these Andhra uh, projections hold up, you know, you've described it as nothing less than a political earthquake. Uh, uh, the exit poll, of course, is double barreled both Lok Sabha as well as, uh, uh, you know, as well as the assembly elections in both. Uh, uh, they suggest trouble for Jagan. 
Tell us why you think it's a political earthquake. Well, political earthquake primarily because uh, it would be for the first time that the Kamma community and the Kapu community would be voting together for the same alliance uh, in the past so many years because the Kapu community has always felt that it is the Reddy community and the Kamma community numerically lesser than the Kapu community, which has dominated the political theater of Andhra Pradesh. Yeah. They are the ones who became chief ministers. If the TDP came to power, it was a Kamma chief minister. If the Congress came to power, it was invariably a Reddy chief minister. Now the Kapu community led by Pawan Kalyan throwing its weight behind the um, uh, Telugu Desam of Chandrababu Naidu. So it would be Kamma plus Kapu plus a large section of the OBCs also. Yeah. So in that sense, it is very um, interesting social engineering that is taking place. And if these numbers hold, it would show that, okay, these communities can come together in order to support a particular political uh, party. And it is definitely bad news for the YSRCP, whose numbers, as far as the male voters, have come down by mm. almost 10% compared to 2019 as per... Uh, the exit poll figures, even among the women, because the YSRCP was banking largely on the support of the women and the pensioners and the rural yeah. base. The women in particular seems also have dipped a little compared to the 2019 figures. And that's why the tectonic shift that is happening in Andhra Pradesh is very significant if these exit poll figures hold. Most political parties hold uh, believing that it is a tight contest, but definitely a contest that could go down to the wire. Political earthquakes, two new BJP gateways to the south, uh, the big takeaways, the big surprises coming in from the southern states. Sudhir, thanks as always. Don't forget to tune into our big coverage starting at 7 p.m. today on the Results Day Eve. Lots of things to see, including Sudhir, who will be live with our big, big panel of guests for what has turned out to be landslide viewership here for India today. The big takeaway from these five southern states viewer is that the south appears no longer to be a difficult area or a forbidden zone for the BJP beyond Karnataka. Take a look. As per the Axis My India poll, the BJP, the Bharatiya Janta Party is poised to get one to three seats one to three seats in Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, 20 to 22 out of 28 for the BJP. Very good news for the Lotus Party. Two to three to the BJP. This in a state where the BJP has never won an election. The BJP's expanding footprint in the south. The Prime Minister Modi-led alliance poised to nearly double its seats in the five southern states. According to the India Today Access My India exit poll, the NDA is all set to bag a majority of the Lok Sabha seats in Karnataka with 23 to 25 seats, with the India Alliance lagging behind with just 3 to 5 seats, but still gaining from 2019 numbers. A BJP sweep will be sweet revenge for the humiliating defeat of the BJP in the 2023 Assembly elections, which was a Congress landslide. You've got the BJP, which lost Karnataka just 12 months ago, now rising once again. And this is how it's showing out. Karnataka, 20 to 22 out of 28 for the BJP. Very good news for the Lotus Party. JDS, 2 to 3, and the Congress, 3 to 5. The BJP is likely to make a breakthrough in Kerala with 2 to 3 seats while the Congress-led UDF is projected to get 17 to 18. If projections are true, then it'll be for the first time that the BJP will win a single seat in Kerala. In the state of Kerala, how is all this translating at the moment into seat? Congress is 13 to 14. Add the four allies from the UDF, that's 18. One to the left and two to three to the BJP. This in a state where the BJP has never won an election. In Tamil Nadu, the BJP is likely to win one to three seats, according to the exit poll, widening its margin, while the DMK may continue its dominance in the southern state with 20 to 22 of the 39 seats. 
29 seats of Tamil Nadu. Remember last time, swept by the India Alliance, the DMK-led alliance. What is the Axis My India poll saying? 20 to 22 for the DMK, 6 to 8 for the Congress, the BJP 1 to 3, 0 to 2 is what we are saying could go to the others. If the exit poll numbers hold on June the 4th, it would mean that India south of the Vindhyas is no longer relatively difficult territory for the BJP, derided for long as a Hindi Hindu Hindutva party. Is the Vanakam BJP moment around the corner for Modi? Bureau Report, India Today.